All right, now, that's right, praise the name of the Lord. Yes, 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 Lords, I'm here, I'm here, sorry for the delay, but uh, I'm here, and uh, I just couldn't rest tonight, Eva Walker, God bless you. I could not rest tonight unless I deal with this ongoing ambiguity uh, started by John Hanna. And uh, we're living in a day now, God bless you, Dexter, where the devil, his strategy is to numb the senses, numbing the senses. In other words, bombard us with all kinds of perversion, whether it be homosexuality, included in that is the lesbians, and we have uh, same-sex marriage, and we have uh, women marrying women, and they're all on the television kissing each other, men kissing each other. I was in Wells Fargo Bank uh, yesterday, and they have a advertisement of two men smiling, and then they begin to hold one another, and they embrace one another as though they were husband and wife. Then we have people like Don Lemon, who is married to a man. Then we have uh, Anderson Cooper. He's married to a man. Then you have lesbians uh, that's married to women. And so what's going on now is that it is called numbing of the senses, that you are bombarded to the point where what is unnatural is now perceived to be natural. Now, I'm going to deal with a lesson, not tonight, not tonight, but I'm going to give you exactly what's going on. Pedophilia, that's right, bestiality, and all of that is going on. Are you listening to me? So uh, you have to really be in touch with God and not be carnal because if you're carnal, you'll be drawn into this perversion that's in the world, and that is to accept it. I just heard that uh, Chick-fil-A, Chick-fil-A, that is supposed to be a Christian business, Chick-fil-A. Yeah, I'm back. It was reported to me that Chick-fil-A now has given in to the LBGTQ community. And it was reported to me. You, you have me now? How many of you, you have me now? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? If you can hear me, and if you can see me, uh, put your name up there. All right? Praise God. Anybody, there you go. I see you. Can you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. All right, Wanda, God bless you. All right, all right, all of you, Kevin Page and Richard Harrison. Oh, praise God, you all are up and uh, listening and so let me uh, say, do y'all see the caption? Do you see the title? Uh, the reason why, how you doing, son? The reason why I have to deal with uh, this, it is because of the numbing of the senses, even in the church. It is so pervasive in the church until the saints have become immune and they are bombarded 
And we're hearing so much about perversion, about homosexuality accepted lifestyle around the world. And that same spirit of acceptance has crept into the, into the church. And then when you see the leader and everybody ought to know that Charles Blake did not win the case. He's a liar. He's an old punk. He's an old liar. Don't call you brother. That's not my brother. My brother is a brother, not a sister. All right? So what I'm saying is that I'm militant because it takes militant prophetic ministry like Elijah or even like John the Baptist. Herod, you cannot have, you can't do that. That's what you need to do. You can't do that. And then you have to tell people you are wrong. And talking about don't judge. Yeah, Paul said, I must judge the inside. The brother had his father's wife and you're not going to deal with this? So what I'm saying, the bombarding and the overwhelming acceptance in this world that uh, you seem to be oddballish, and you ask yourself a question, am I really uh, understanding the word? Do I have a real understanding of the word? And why is it that these churches have become so androgynous and they accept the perversion as normal? And so this week I got to deal with uh, a uh, philosophy that gives uh, a footing or let's say support for the ambiguity and the androgynous acceptance and homosexuality, which includes lesbianism and bestiality and all of that. Do you know, they got some people, they're in love with a dog. In love with their dogs. In love with horses. And then when you talk about... Uh, all kinds of perversion that's just nasty. It is abominable for a man to lay with a woman like he would. I mean, lay with a man as, the, as he would with a woman. It is opposite of what God planned. The anatomical compatibility is not there when you're talking about a man with another man. So I, I got a lesson that I'm going to teach you, but I want to, in just a few minutes, I want to deal with this John Hanna. I've been talking to people, I mean, they're calling me up, and oh my goodness, one brother, he just couldn't, couldn't take it. I mean, of course, it was comical about the rubbing of the belly and, and all of that. I want to say to all you board members, all you preachers and all that, don't call me because I'm not calling you back. You know, uh, Bishop Porter called me, and I want him to know I'm not talking to nobody. I am free. I don't want you guys. I don't need you guys. When I needed you, you wouldn't call me. And you let that sissy, all right, lie to me. You're, you're a bunch of punks. You're a bunch of sissies. Because a sissy is a weak, a weak man. A coward is a sissy. So, uh, Brandon, you are a neophyte, Napoleonic sissy, all right? And don't call me. Don't nobody say nothing to me. I'm so glad I am free. 
I don't need you. Don't want you. I wouldn't be in that kind of foolishness. I'm not brainwashed. I've always been confrontational. When I find out that you're a liar, when I find out that you've fallen a sissy, when I find out that you let this John Hanna, and I saw a picture of him. Somebody showed me a picture where he has an androgynous hat, burgundy around the hat, and it's gray. And then he wears these sissified clothes. And you stupid. Church of God and Christ folks, you emotional junkies, you have no discernment. Here's a man, here's a man that gets up in the pulpit, the people, I, I got friends and I uh, got the people who are PhDs and whatever. They said, man, we have never heard anybody say anything like that. Have never, never heard anybody say that I went to a prayer meeting and I took on the spirit or the mantle of Mother Shaw, a woman. And when you take on the mantle and some of you stupid preachers up there tell me, hey man, hey man, you don't know what you're talking about, you're stupid. And even, that's right, kenosis, even, even, Muhammad said, I'm not a Muslim, but Muhammad said, it is, listen, he said, one learned man is harder on the devil than a thousand ignorant worshipers. Church of God in Christ, you all are, you all are acting ignorant. You like you have a lobotomy. You act like you don't think, you don't have no discernment. Why? Because of the enthrallment of this Charles Blake who is controlled by the devil himself. He is narcissistic and he's also totalitarian. He's also fascist. He has a controlling spirit and you all are under the spell and what a spell does, a spell controls you, whoever put the spell on you. And it works through fear. Fear, I'm afraid what the bishop gonna say. I'm afraid we're gonna upset him. I'm afraid, and that's, listen, <clears throat> even Wooden has been brainwashed. I'm gonna talk about him, on a, I'm gonna give him a special program. When I get through with him, I'm going to take that manual. <clears throat> yes, uh-huh. Praise the name of the Lord. Listen, I'm fired up. I don't need these hypocrites. See, that's what makes me dangerous. I don't need them. Don't want them. And don't call me. And this YouTube channel, I got a worldwide audience. And the people are calling me. They said, Bishop, <clears throat> are you serious? I mean, did that man really say that? Yes, he did. They're checking out the video. And they just can't believe the holiness. Pentecostal church have stooped so low and no longer credible for holiness, for sanctification. The devil using Charles Blake to numb the senses. To numb the senses. Numbing the senses by acceptance of a Magic Johnson who has money. So this bishop has been bought. How much is the preacher in the window? Magic Johnson writes checks. And listen, that's right, silence is consent. Nobody's saying nothing but me. <clears throat> Brandon, you should have uh, not uh, rubbed that man's stomach. You should have hit him in the stomach when he coming near to you. And here's a man say, I've been dreaming. I've been dreaming all my life uh, that you, Bishop,
that you would rub my belly. Oh, you rub it so well. That's it. That's it. Rub it. Rub it. Rub it. Oh, that's it. That's it. What kind of mess is that? Don't forget, I'm going to give you a definitive answer as to what's behind, all right, the mindset that's behind this acceptance. And uh, Larry, Larry, Larry Reed, let me tell you something. You said we should have a discussion. Let me tell you something, you reprobate. If you name the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity, self-indulgence, deny yourself, pick up your cross, live a crucifixional life. You are enemy. You are an enemy of Jesus Christ. Why don't you get your behind all, just depart from Jesus. Get on out of the church. Because somebody going to, listen, somebody is going to expose you, and I'm doing it right now. There's no discussion. The word of God is not to be discussed. It's to be adhered to. The Bible says the effeminate. There's no discussion about that. What, can, what do you want to discuss about that? Let me tell you the definition. Effeminate, same as sissy, is a man who has Women mannerism. Then somebody said, well, you know, I'm not sexually uh, active as a homosexual. Listen, the Bible says the effeminate and homosexuals. See, he made a difference between, oh, let me read it. Um, you know what? I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank God for Jesus and the Holy Spirit. I'm so glad. I'm independent of these Nigers, and they can be independent of me. I don't need, I've always had the gift of goodbye. But I'm not saying goodbye and leaving you alone. I'm going to trouble you. I'm going to pick everyone that I know that is a whole monger, that's a sissy. I'm going to call your name. And you know, when I get hold of something, I feel like a thorn in your flesh. A thorn may be small. But it sure can give you a whole lot of pain and a whole lot. Of, so try to ignore a thorn. Try to ignore a horsefly. Try to ignore mosquitoes. Try. And I'm like a horsefly. And these, listen, you can't fly, you cannot fan this fly. And the horse flies coming from the north. God sends trouble to open up your ears. It's God's hearing aid, and that is trouble. Job said he opens up your ear through trouble. And some people are going to die. They're going to die. So my name is Earl Carter. They're going to die. I told God you got to take some of these hypocrites out of here just like you did Ananias and Sapphira. Charles Blake should be dead right now for him to lie. He should be dead. And Brooks, oh, my God. So I came to my mind that if you say he'll drink anything, got a bird on it, and thank God they don't have buzz it, <laughs> buzz it gin. Buzz it. He'll drink that. Buzz it. All right. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So listen, listen to me. Listen to me. This John Hanna, he ushered in a spirit into that convocation. He ushered in a spirit of ambiguity. He ushered in a numbing of the senses. He ushered in a spirit of shock. And the people were so shocked. They didn't know how to react. So since 
they are emotional junkies, and they're more controlled by emotion than intellect. You see, if I had a choice between emotionalism and intellect, give me intellect and let emotion be the caboose of the train, but let my mind, my intellect, so I can determine right from wrong, influenced by the word of God, the clarion voice of a prophet or preacher that's connected with God, that's not carnal, but spiritually minded. And you cannot go higher than your leader. So, mm, when I think about Jesus Christ and how I love him, he first loved me. I came off the streets. I came from a broken home. My father was the bishop of the streets. My father used to walk around with his gun and drinking and carrying on. And, and uh, he was a, a crooked shooter. And I was a quiver. I was an arrow in the quiver of a crooked shooter. He could not aim me in the right direction. But here are you people who've been born and raised in the church, educated, brought up in a good environment, and you're still a sissy. They sent you to all the good schools, and you're still a sissy. Uh, Bishop Blake Sr. sent you to Atlanta to study under the worst pedophile the church has ever known, and I believe in my heart that this man was molested, turned out by J.W., uh, J.D. husband. Now, that's what I believe. I can believe what I want to believe. All right, so the church is now uh, inundated, permeated, running over with perverted people. You got Jerry Macklin, a whole month. You got uh, Brooks. Then you got the main mother of them all, Charletta, Edwina, and got the nerve to want to put me out the church. What about putting, uh, putting William McCray, put his ugly behind out of the church? Put him out the church. He's a he's an anathema. He's a curse. He's black too. He is not advantageous for the church. But no, but I tell you what, I am so glad I don't need you niggers. Don't call me. Don't even think about me. But I'm going to think about you. Because I have nothing else to do but bother with you. Yeah. All right, let's get back to this Hannah. Let's get back to this Hannah. Man, I'm so glad I don't need... Oh, it's such a good feeling. Oh, it's a good feeling that you're not in a cage, that you're not brainwashed. Man, I'm so free. My wife and I, my wife, she said, baby, you couldn't pay me to go back in that mess. I said, what? No. You, you don't go back into the yoke of bondage. These people are brainwashed. They're stupid to follow a sissy. And uh, Brandon, listen, don't call me no more. Do not call me. Now, here's what Hannah said. And listen, the scripture, put this down. The scripture says, 
in Proverbs 6 and 2. 6 and 2. You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. Hannah is snared. That is, he's trapped. He is snared. He's in a trap. His mouth has trapped him. And watch this, the Bible says, from the abundance of a man's heart does he speak. So he spoke out of his heart. You know, I told you what that means, your intellect, your will, your desire, your emotion, your heart. He spoke. He spoke. All right? And his words told on him. He told on himself. And his people, they sort of upset with me and all. Listen, which don't 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 bother me. I'm sm the mosquitoes supposed to bother people and and <laughs> horse flies. All right. Supposed to bother people. So that's what I'm doing. I'm bothering people. And I love it. I love this ministry, bothering people, disturbing the peace. This man, I'm going to let you go home. I'm going to let you go in a few minutes. This man said he took on the mantle of Mother Shaw, a woman. Now, this is the thing that caused some of the people that have talked to me, they said, Bishop, listen. They said they've never heard anything like that. See, every time the Church of God in Christ tried to deny the message that I preached, and uh, I think Jive said, and he told the truth, I was contrite. I was willing to uh, write a retraction. I was willing to apologize. I said, you know, if I hurt anybody... You know, that was not in my haste, in my haste. You know, I know how to say things to let you know what I really, really feel. And I felt, well, you know, maybe I, I went too far. I even told Jive that when he came to visit me, that's before we started really going at each other. But I used to pastor him. He reminded me that, of that. So he said that they never gave me a chance. They never gave me due process. Now, that is wicked. And why is it that I'm not in jail? All the stuff Elder Crawley said, if I said the things that I said about Charlotte, if I said that about him and was wrong, he said he would own everything I have. See the point? This man is just as guilty. He is a sister as sure as I'm standing here. So why is it that Earl Carter is still saying what he says about this man? No, this girly boy. So, you know, yeah, Scubala Church, you're right, y'all been following me, and I ain't heard no bell yet. But getting back to this crazy man, he said, now watch the scriptures, you are snared, did y'all see the, the title, the, the, uh, the caption, is it up there? You are snared by the words of your mouth. You are taken by the words of your mouth. You are snared. You are trapped. This man is trapped. I don't care how many folk try to justify his words. Yeah, I want you guys to subscribe, and I want you to like, and I want you to share. Subscribe, subscribe.
do that. Let's build our numbers up. It's over 6,000. Let's keep on going. Be a wonderful thing. We get to 10,000. Just keep going. All right. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, uh, you say you have a question. All right. I don't usually have a question and answer, but uh, let me get through here. Let me get through here. Listen. Uh, all right. Hello to you. God bless you. All right. God bless you. Uh-huh. Bye, SpongeBob. <laughs> you call him SpongeBob. All right. All right. Uh-huh. God bless you. Yeah, John Etta. John Etta. <laughs> Hannah. See, they're giving you a name, man. Yeah, he's married, but listen. Uh, who else? Uh, Eddie Long was married. Charles Blake is married. Uh, who else was? A uh, uh, husband was married. Whole lot of folk married. That don't. I don't prove nothing. All right, don't prove a thing. Uh, Bishop Patterson, GE was married. All right. So let me say this to you, and I'm gonna close in a few minutes. Get this now, he said, not me, he said that he went to a prayer meeting with Mother Shaw and he wanted her mantle. And along with the mantle comes the mannerism. The mannerism, which means he went into the prayer meeting. Well, he didn't say that he was a, you know, you notice now he said, when I was a young person. He didn't say when I was, listen, most people will say when I was a young man. If you look at the tape, the video, he didn't say I was a young man. He said I was a young person. A young person. See, so that's, that's like a neutral thing. You know, you can either go one way or the other. Uh, I was a young person. All right? So why would you say a young person? Why would you say a young man? And then he said, when you take on the mantle, you take on the mannerism. That's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard in my life. You go to a prayer meeting, a man, and you come out a sissy? That is ridiculous. And I know some of his people upset, which I don't care. I don't care. You need to get upset enough to leave. Because if he lay hands on you, like some of these preachers, you let that man lay hands on you, all of you might be switching by next week. It takes a while. <laughs> all of you might be switching with little tiny feet. You let that man lay hands on you, y'all got to be crazy. Then act like you feeling something. You don't feel nothing. It's by routine. That man, how you going to feel the spirit working through somebody who confessed that he has feminine ways. Now let's set the record straight. Then I'm going to close. I'm going to close. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. In case you don't know, in case you didn't know, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Now we... We're covering everybody. Do not be deceived. Don't be deceived by this John Hanna and this sissy uh, Charles Blake. Do not be deceived. And I want to say to Larry, Larry Reed, what discussion when the word of God says what it says. It is not well, the prophet, 
should not strive. That is, he should not argue. I do not debate. I do not argue or debate. I say, thus saith the Lord. The man of God is complete. He is complete with the word of God. What Bible did you write? Huh? And who made you Lord and Savior? In order for you to be an authority representing God with divinity, you have to be born by immaculate conception. And then you got to live 33 years of impeccable living. You got to heal the sick, raise the dead. You got to feed 5,000. Then you have to go to the cross and die. And I'll give you three days to get up. So you are not the authority. And I want everybody to listen to Larry. Larry's a carnal, used to be saved. He is a backslider. He's a reprobate. He is duplicitous. He's ambiguous. He is lost. I can tell by his speech, you are betrayed by your speech. And if you're not for Jesus, get your butt out of the name, I mean, out of the church and depart. If you're going to name the name of the Lord, depart from iniquity. God don't need you. He got a whole lot of folk that can sing. He got a whole lot of folk that got uh, radio personality ability. So I want everybody to know, don't listen to this Larry Reed. This man is crazy. All right? He tried to be so, you know, matter-of-factly that he know everything. You don't know nothing, claiming to know all and yet know nothing. If you're going to agree with somebody acting like a woman, I don't see nothing because you act like a woman. I don't tell me he loves women. Yeah, you are, maybe you are bisexual. I mean, you, you got the anatomy, you have the anatomy, but you act like a little girl. That's why you agree with him. Maybe somebody touched you. Maybe you've been touched and it sure wasn't the Lord. I mean, I can tell by the way you talk, man, you are a sissy. So don't listen to this crazy man. He's a he's an antichrist. He is against Jesus Christ. If you fought Jesus, the homophon, you think like him. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Jesus is the absolute of God. The word of God represents the mind of God. God has established his word. And the way of man is not in man. Oh, I'm going to hit myself, but I'm going to be teaching on something. I want you to bring bring your notepads and all this stuff. I'm free. I'm getting ready to go deeper. That's right. I am free. Paul said, I'm free from all men that I might be a servant unto all men. Boy, that's a good feeling. Wow. Free from all niggers. <laughs> <laughs> free from all men, ah, that I might be a servant unto all men. Ah, no, we're not friends. Anybody don't say nothing about, if you say something crazy about God and be on the wrong side, I'm coming at you. That's right. Well, he was molested by, I knew somebody touched him. So he ought to be anti-molestation. He ought to be pro-masculinity, pro-Jesus, pro-the word. And stop being an enemy of the cross. That's right. I don't know. Nobody's safe. And I'm telling you, I can go on for a long time. I don't have nothing else to do because I'm free. I don't need, I, oh, I'm so, Lord, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I thank you. Oh, I'm so free. No more chains are binding me. Man, my soul is resting. It's just another blessing. 
Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I'm free. I got my pretty wife, and she by my side, and, and Lord, we just enjoy one another. Man, I don't need no, I don't need these darkies, these stupid jackasses that's in the Church of God in Christ. I'm, an, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that I ever, well, Bishop Jones, he was classy and no scandals, and, and he ordained me. I came up under class, not under these punks. Talking about, and then uh, uh, Hannah talking about, he did calling us punks. And, uh, yes, that's what you are. You hear me, Hannah? That's what you are. We call it like we see it. And the way you was walking when you call yourself praying for these people, I said, look at this man. He's switching, walking like a church mother. Walking like a church mother. And so I want all his members to know he told on himself. He said, now let me read the scripture, Hannah. He's, listen, Paul, the man of God, the apostle, defender of the faith, an apologist, he's called to defend the faith. Do you not know that all oh, that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived by Larry Reed, Loretta, Loretta Reed. Do not be, I'm on you for a while, brother. I'm on you for a while. You say something stupid, I'm going to be on you for a while. I, don't, I might do two, three weeks on you. Oh, yeah, and I've got the scriptures to back me up. And I rebuke you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, be not deceived by Larry Loretta. Read, live a lip, read, and look like an, a part of the anatomy of a woman. I'm being euphemistic, but I'm militant. And, uh, and when you want to fight, you know, bring your lunch. Because we're going to be here a while. And one thing about me, I love the fight. I'm talking about in the spirit. And also, I, you know, before I got really saved, I loved the fight with these. And boom, you know, and all that kind of stuff. That's my background. Ain't nobody scared of nobody. Not me. No, no, not me. Watch this. Oh. Anybody's unrighteous is not going to heaven. You're not going to heaven. And you're wrong. Larry, read. You're wrong for agreeing with this man. If you agree with the devil, then you are not agreeing with God. Here's what the scripture says. He that is for me is not against me. Oh, there it is. But he that is against me is not for me. There is no ambiguity. There is no, let's say, neutrality. Either you're right or wrong, either you're straight or crooked, either you are a sissy or man. I mean, listen, God wants absolute surrender. Don't be amphibious, one foot in the homosexual world and another foot in the church. Get your both feet out of the church. Get your behind out of the church. Leave Jesus alone. He's not lonely because he got me and he got some others. There's a remnant that love God. 7,000 have not bowed, Elijah. Get your butt out the church. Boy, I wish Jesus would come down like he did when he went into the temple and threw and throw your behind out the church. Grab your sissified self and throw your behind out of the church. Because that's what I would do. 
Man, I come into the church and throw all of you out. I have a throwing out convention right in that church. Just never been in the street. Man, somebody beat you to death. See, I'm from the streets. We don't play that. Don't lie to me and don't play with my Jesus. Get yourself away from the church. Get on out. Don't sing Jesus songs. Don't merchandise him and make him a product. Just get on out to church. What time is it? Get on out to church. Get, 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 get on out. Yeah, you darkies always want Jesus to feed you, make a way for you. He raised you. He gave you food to eat, clothes on your back, a roof over your head. You didn't know nothing but Jesus. It wasn't no, uh, listen, the, the Israelites uh, calling him an, by another name. No, I call on Jesus. Yeshua? No. I call on Jesus. That works for me. All right? And you that don't want to live right, get your behind out the church. Stop living off the Jesus church. You know, I like what uh, Craig uh, Laurie said. He said, compromise means this, that you want to enjoy the thrill of the world. You want to enjoy the tight pants. You want to enjoy the frivolity of the world. You want to enjoy the thrill of the world. So you're trying to be uh, amphibious, one foot in the church and the other in the world. Jesus wants you exclusively and not share you with any devil. And the world is a society without God. The world hates God. The world hates restrictions and rules and regulations, Ten Commandments, Beatitude, the totality of Scripture. The devil is antithetical to God, and God is antithetical to the devil. Now, either you're going to be on the Lord's side or get on out, and just go on with the devil. You can't serve two masters. You got to love one and hate the other. So if you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Wearing earring like the world. Your tight pants is like the world. I mean, just everything, uh, uh, just the world, like tattoos, all, and making excuses for this. What about if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature? What about? Come out from among them, be separated. Tattoos and, you know, and uh, tight pants. And, see, only sisters wear them tight uh, leather pants like you. Man, you you got to be, God don't want to be bothered with you. He don't want you. He'll turn you over to a reprobated mind. You're going to agree with John Hanna. Well, I don't see a nigga. You know what? You are a sissy. There you go. I'll tell you that to your face. If you want me to, come on down here, and I'll tell you that to your face. We can meet somewhere, and I'll look you nose to nose and tell you exactly what I'm saying right now. Man, you make me sick. Anyway, here's this old Hanna. He told on himself he's snared by his own words, and you are snared by your words. And you are guilty by association and agreement. How can two walk together except they agree? How can you agree unless you're walking together? <laughs> I'm stirred up tonight. I'm going to be stirred up till, till I die. All right, here we go. Be not deceived. Neither fornicators, that's these people having sex outside of marriage. I know somebody right now shacking. And you're not married. You're going to hell. Your bed is defiled. And uh, adulterers, idol worshipers, and then adulterers, nor homosexuals, see, 
no homosexuals, and that means no effeminate. And then the other says, you, you, you add that, no uh, homosexuals and no sodomites. That's the action, sodomites. Sodomy, having sex, all right, in somebody's buttocks, rectum, all right? Homosexuality, effeminate men. Then it has everybody. See, you put them all together. No thieves, no coverages, no drunkards, no revilers, no extortioners, will inherit the kingdom of God. John Hanna, with his mannerism of a woman, he might go to the Church of God in Christ convention. He might even come back and speak to the young men and women at the AIM anal convention, but he's not, he's not going to heaven unless he had a metamorphosis where he changed from acting like a little girl and become masculine like a man, he will not go to heaven. And it did tell me, it was reported to me, just like Matthew Stevenson. Same spirit. Same spirit said they full, that man's church is full of sissies. You show me your congregation and I'll show you the kind of person you are. Every kind begets his own kind. So sissies, they love to gather and feel validated and accepted. Oh yeah, they love, and they love to sing. Love to sing. Oh, I could have a church full of people if you cut the price and don't demand holiness. You can have a whole lot of folk overnight. It's like Eddie Long, 25,000. But look what he was. Look what he was. A down low. Are you listening to me? So, John Hanna, it was reported to me that in Chicago, his church or churches are filled with homosexuals, effeminate sodomites. You see, there's a difference. And nobody doing any spraying. But I'm Earl Raid Carter. And I'm doing some spraying. So I want to close with this. Sister Hannah, you are in, uh, you are snared, you are trapped by your own words. We didn't say it. You said that you have mannerism of a woman. And I want to hear, I want you to know now, you are going to hell. You're wrong, and you're going to hell. And anybody agree with you, like Larry Reed, you're going to hell with your tight pants on and with your earring. The fire going to burn that ring out of your ear. No, matter of fact, the undertaker going to take it and pawn it. And they're going to take that tight pants off you and give it to another sissy. Oh, I'm on you. I'm not, listen, I'm not done. No, I'm not done with you niggas in the church acting stupid, standing in the way of sinners. Standing in the way of sinners. All you sissies, go join the church of Satan. Leave Jesus alone. Go get your own church. Just call it the sissy church of God in Christ. Just come on out. We are sissies, and this is the sissy Kojic church. I'm done. As you can see, I'm stirred. I'm done. Don't forget, I got a special message that's coming up. I got to teach you. 
what's behind or let's say the philosophical underpending of this movement that is trying to numb the senses. Sorcery, all right, manipulation, and sophistry. That's dangerous. Sophistry, clever reasoning, but wrong. God bless you. Don't forget, go to EarlCarterMinistry.com and make a, dof make a donation by the way of Zelle, by the way of PayPal, by the way of Cash Out. Go there and uh, make a donation. Don't forget, March the 25th, 26th, 27th, be in our annual spring conference at the Shingle Creek Hotel. Shingle Creek Hotel, Orlando, Florida. Come on, three nights. Well, we start Wednesday night. Uh, we kick off Wednesday night, and then Thursday morning, Dr. One and Only, James Bolton, will be our facilitator. And I just heard from some people from California that was at our convocation. And they made mention of Dr. Bolton. They said, Lord have mercy. They're going to try to make it. And they want to come in a few days earlier so they can enjoy the hotel. And I want you to know my wife will uh, negotiate and get you the best, the best rate that she can get. And we're trying to get it down to, uh, yes, yeah, somebody saw Dr. Bolton, uh, trying to get it down to $99. Oh, she's a great... A great negotiator. And right now it's 139. All right, 139. You call uh, her number, 407 367 9776. That's 407 367 9776. And put your name on the list. And also, uh, this couple that talked to me from California, they said Black Friday is coming up. And you can get a real good deal on your airline ticket. Black Friday, all right? Uh, that's right, get your ticket early. March will be here before you know it. And plus, that's my birthday. That weekend will be my birthday. I'll be 70 years old. I know I don't look like it. I, I, I know I don't look I don't look like it. That's right. After all I've been through. Oh God, I thank you. All right. So I couldn't read all of that. But listen, uh, call her up, 407-367-9776. Call her now. Call her now. Oh no. Huh? All right, praise the name of the Lord. That's right, I'm a jabbing bishop, yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, also, uh, I want you to subscribe, like, and share. Subscribe, like, and share. That's right, I haven't heard a bell yet. That's right, uh-huh, praise the name of the Lord. All right, I'm leaving, I'm, uh, but this week, stay tuned. I got something heavy that I got to give you to understand what is going on. And it's a mess. So, so y'all pray for me. And all you wicked folk like John Hanna and Larry Reed, have a bad night. I wish you toss and turn all night. That's right, because you're sleeping on a short bed trying to cover with a short spread. Your faith is inefficient. That's right. So good night, y'all. And I'm gonna keep on preaching orthodoxy. That's right. Orthopraxy and orthopathy. That's my assignment. All right. I'll tell you more about that. All right. My, 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 my. All right. I'll see you all maybe tomorrow or at least Friday. All right. God bless you. Uh, the season of sissies. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, Delores, you something else. You just as bad as I am. 
Good night, y'all. I'll see you next time. God bless you. Bye-bye. Yeah.